Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome back to yet another FNAF news video talking about FNAF Plus. You guys absolutely loved the last video talking about FNAF Plus, so I'm back once again with brand new info. We got some looks at brand new UI for the game, most of which we talked about last episode, which, if you haven't seen it, will be linked down below. The creator of FNAF Plus, Fiznum, released a huge facts and questions about the game, which includes the official description and even some updates on possible merchandise for FNAF Plus. So since we're all super hyped to talk about FNAF Plus again, let's not drag out this intro any longer. If you're excited for more FNAF Plus, and hey, if you want to see more videos on FNAF Plus, hit the like button if you're new, subscribe, and that'll let me know that you guys do want to see more content about FNAF Plus. But let's say, hypothetically, you don't know what FNAF Plus is. Well, <laughs> Let me explain it. So, very briefly, FNAF Plus is a official reimagining of the first FNAF game. It's a part of the Fazbear Fanverse initiative, which means it's going to be a official product endorsed by Scott. And it has the chance to be ported to consoles and mobile and even get merchandise of it in the future. And I want to start off today's video by bringing you attention to what Phil said in regards to possible merchandise for FNAF Plus. Because in a recent video, we talked about some new potential FNAF products by Fat Mojo that featured a Freddy FNAF Plus bobblehead. And so someone reached out to Phil and they said, yo, Phil, FNAF Plus merch? And Fiznom actually responded to this. He said these items were presented at a toy fair as potential FNAF merch to gauge interest in both the licensors and the customers. You can even see subject to licensor approval at the bottom. So once again, that all means that these are not official products yet. They haven't been approved by Scott. They're just ideas, again, potential merch that could be made. Personally, I'm not interested in FNAF Plus getting merch until after the actual game is released. So that's why, for example, when we talk about the Fanverse U2's wave, we don't talk about a FNAF Plus figure. You know, it hasn't been announced that FNAF Plus is getting any Funko plushies like Candy or, or Pop Goes. And personally, I don't mind it. I think it's a very, very smart idea that certain indie games nowadays could learn to value to focus on the game first and then merchandise after that. I do hope that we can get merchandise of FNAF Plus after the game comes out, but honestly, that's just gonna have to be something that we wait and see what happens with that. Next, let's talk about the user interfaces that we've gotten for FNAF Plus so far. So like we talked about in that last video covering FNAF Plus, we got a whole bunch of different UI styles that we're gonna get in the game. And again, if you want a in-depth look at the UIs and the UIs we're going to see in the game. Link to that video in the description, but for right now, let's focus on what we've gotten since that video. Phil made a tweet not too long ago saying incredibly minor and inconsequential FNAF Plus detail. Camera static in the game is procedurally generated with a single 240 kilobyte source image used to create up to 6,400 unique possible animation frames. For comparison, FNAF 1 had 8 frames of static that took up to 6.36 megabytes of space. And as you can see in the video, that, my friends, is a whole lot of unique static frames. Also in this video, you can see some of the UI that we will get into later in the video, the power meter and the usage bar. And also, I could be entirely wrong about this, but it's a theory that I wanted to point out. Notice how this video that Phil posted to Twitter for us is only focusing on the bottom left of the screen. Could Phil be hiding some UI elements? on the bottom right, or maybe the top left of the screen? I mean, we do know that in the top right will be the clock and also the day of the week, but could Phil be hiding some UI elements and sneakfully cropped them out for this video? Who knows? It's a, it's a little theory I've got going on. Tell me, what do you think in the comments? And then Phil also made a quick tweet showing off the creation of some of the UI elements using a brand new feature in the game engine he's using to make FNAF Plus. We are going to talk about these UI elements in depth uh, pretty, pretty soon, but I just thought it was interesting to show off the creation of these also because they use a brand new feature in Game Maker Studio 2, so I just thought it was going to be interesting to show off, so there you go. And now moving on to the actual UI for FNAF Plus, let's focus on the power meter. Phil made a tweet saying, love the way this came out, showing off what the power meter will look like when you lose power over the course of the night. So you can see a very smooth transition as the power slowly drains in the battery icon. So not only does the percent go down, but also again the bar in the battery meter. And it looks like it's completely white until you get below 
20%, in which case it will turn yellow. And then once you pass 20%, it turns orange. At 10%, it starts flashing red because you're very low on power at this point. And once you finally hit zero, that's when you're screwed. You can see the five usage icons you had before are completely gone, which means whatever you had on that took that power is now off or open. And then the battery icon flashes to signify, yeah, you got no more battery left. You're out of power. And then Phil also showed off the same animation, just using different UI styles we're gonna get in the game. And interestingly enough, I don't know if this is a mistake by Phil or if it's actually going to be how these styles change, you know, in the game. It looks like depending on which style you use, it'll change at what percent the color of the bar changes to. So remember how we said once you get below 30%, it's yellow, and then 20% orange, 10% it's red. As you can see here, we're at 24%, and the color is still black, it's still the same. In fact, for this style, it only switches to one other color, which is red, once you get below 20%. So I'm assuming that that's how it's going to be in the game and it's just going to be based off which style you use. You think it would be consistent throughout all the different styles, but who knows? But that brings us up to date with all of the UI for FNAF Plus. So now let's go over the FAQ that Phil released for FNAF Plus earlier this year. Now, I'm not going to go over every question because there is a lot, so I'll leave a link to the full paste bin link down below, but I've just picked some of the most interesting ones to look at today. So first up, let's take a look at the official description for the game. A modern horror classic, given new life in a way you've never seen before. Well, Welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Spend your nights with us as a security guard inside of the infamous pizza restaurant that brings kids and grown-ups alike food and thrills at a discount price. During your shift, you'll get to work up close and personal, but not too close, with our iconic robot entertainers, Freddy Fazbear, Bonnie, and Chica. Interesting to point out that Foxy is not listed on this list. Continuing on, make sure our animatronic friends can safely wander around at night, prevent any damage to company property, and don't let anything enter your office. Trust us, it's a long story. Are you ready to survive a brand new Five Nights at Freddy's? Features. FNAF Plus brings back classic FNAF plus some more. A reimagined experience that's sure to scare and surprise both newcomers and veterans of the FNAF series. The original Five Nights of Terror with an extra special sixth night and many more post-game bonuses to complete. Expanded custom night mode with in-depth night customization settings, adjustable AI, and additional mods. Revamped visuals and animation displayed at a native 180p resolution. Brand new plus mode for thrill-seeking fans looking for a real challenge. Unlockable prizes and trinkets for your office and a real options and pause menu, finally. What is the current state of the game? As of today, the 4th of February 2022, which obviously is not today when you're watching this video. So this info is going to be a little bit out of date, but I don't think it's going to be by a huge margin. All assets for use in the game have been completed. All character states and animations have been completed. The game is playable in an alpha state using very rough placeholders and basic renders. AI has been fully programmed and is currently in the process of being tested and balanced. Though playable, the game is still nowhere near in a complete state, especially considering all the work left for polish, optional features, post-game rewards, and bonus content. It lacks the necessary visual polish and atmosphere to be publicly shown off, and as such, footage will be reserved until much closer to release. So we've talked about this quite a lot in multiple past FNAF Plus videos, but Phil doesn't plan on showing any teasers or trailers until we're pretty close to the game's release, which is why it's been such a long drought of FNAF Plus teasers and trailers. When will FNAF Plus release? The game has no set release date as of now. No dates, release windows, estimations, or promises have been given nor will be given until the game is feature complete. What are the biggest differences between Plus and the original series? A greater emphasis in horror and mechanical complexity. FNAF Plus will feature much more in-depth enemy AI, a greater number of unique creepy events, and a bigger focus on the resource management survival game that made FNAF stand out from its horror contemporaries back in 2014. The game will also be darker, 
visually and tonally from the rest of the series. How long will the game be? FNAF Plus contains the same amount of nights for its quote main campaign as the original, five nights and an additional sixth night, which will all take around the same amount of time to complete. However, a lot of effort is being made to bring additional content to the post game, such as an expanded custom night mode, a brand new plus mode, and a lot of other bonuses for fans to enjoy. Is FNAF Plus canon to the original series? The story of FNAF Plus is set in its own self-contained alternate universe, separate from the canon of the mainline FNAF title. Will merchandise, plushies, posters, or figures be released for the game? No plans for merch are in place until the release of the actual game. Will the game be translated to other languages? There are plans to include a Spanish translation update post-launch. However, this and other language options depend on publisher support after release. Will Scott Cawthon return to voice Phone Guy in the game's calls? It was originally planned for phone guy to return to the game. However, Scott declined to record new lines for the character when it came time to implement the calls. As such, Phone Guy, as a character, will not return in FNAF Plus, and will be replaced by different characters that fans of the series may enjoy seeing. So that we actually knew about and we've talked about in the past. But the reason why I repeated it in this video is because there was a certain word in there that I emphasized that we should really pay attention to, and will be replaced by different characters as in multiple characters, so that is certainly interesting. Multiple characters are going to replace the phone guy. A lot of people had predicted some sort of like, you know, hand unit type character, but this seems to maybe debunk that a bit? Or at least if it is a new phone guy or a new hand unit for this game, there's going to be multiple guides, multiple people giving instructions in this game. And finally, are there more FNAF Plus games planned for the future? There are no plans in place to develop future titles beyond the current game. So that means, as of right now, there are no plans to make a FNAF 2 Plus or a 3 Plus or 4 Plus or any game plus. Do I think we're ever going to see a new Plus game, FNAF 2 Plus, 3 Plus, etc.? I do not know. Because as some of you may know, back in December, after the release of Security Breach, Phil actually declared he was kind of leaving the FNAF community. Which isn't something I brought up on the channel because it felt like if I made a video on it, it would just feel kind of cheap, kind of clickbaity, you know, like FNAF Plus creator leaves FNAF fanbase, oh my god, what now? And at the end of the day, it is Phil's call, it's his decision, you know, I'm gonna respect it. Will we see a new FNAF Plus game after this one? I don't know, but I think it's refreshing to note that at least we're still getting this FNAF Plus game, and, and Phil said in that post that his unfortunate experience and release of Security Breach has kind of motivated him more to work harder and better on this game. And I honestly cannot wait to see what this game is going to feature. But that's going to do it for today. Hopefully you all enjoyed another update on FNAF Plus. And of course, I will be back whenever we do get more updates on FNAF Plus. So again, subscribe so you don't miss out on any more FNAF news. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.